Last week, we introduced you to a group of orphans in Ukraine and the man watching over them. They're in a city that has been taken over by Russian forces, and they're just trying to make it through. Jason Bellini did reconnect with them and tells us how they've been surviving. In the first days of the war, Newsy talked with Vladimir Sagaidok and the 50 young orphans he's helping survive. With communications going in and out in Kherson, the first Ukrainian city controlled and occupied by the Russians, it's been hard to get in touch. But finally, Newsy reached him again. Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys. They've been sheltering, all 50 of them, sometimes in the basement for two weeks now. It must be difficult. Vladimir asks them my question. How are they coping after two weeks locked inside, windows closed, shades drawn? He has them speak one at a time. Hot. Bored. Bored are the words they choose. Hello, what is your name? A 16-year-old named Dennis, one of the older boys here, speaks for the group. What's happening there in your city? What can you tell me? Currently, we are occupied by Russians, he says. We see how airplanes fly over our heads. We hear explosions, usually at night or early morning. Helicopters and fighter aircraft fly really close to us. We also saw tanks and armored vehicles, but we haven't seen Russian soldiers personally. How are the younger children doing during this? It must be very difficult for all of you, but for the really young ones who may not understand what's happening, what's it like for them? Dennis says the older children help the younger ones. They try to focus their attention on activities, games, cartoons. But all of them, he says, including the younger ones, know what is happening in their country. Is there anything that you'd like to say to Americans and other people around the world who are watching this right now? Anything you'd like to say, Dennis? First of all, he says, I would like to thank the U.S. for supporting Ukraine. The states already gave weapons, financial support, humanitarian aid. Right now, we really need humanitarian aid, and I asked for all who could help us. We need a green corridor. We're blocked. We're surrounded. We can't get food or medicine. We hope that the U.S. could find diplomatic ways to provide a humanitarian corridor to Kherson. All the roads in and out of Kherson are now blocked. With nothing coming in or out, the people of the city and these orphans are running out of food. There are reports that there's only one week of food left in your city. Do you guys have enough food? We have food for 10 to 14 days, Vladimir says. Kherson is surrounded, and there's no way to bring into the city food or medicine. But without a way out, he does not know how they'll survive. Vladimir says that charities from several countries have offered to send buses to get the orphans out. While they wait for a way out, and with no parents to look out for them, they're relying on Vladimir and each other, trying to keep busy, trying to keep their spirits up. Jason Bellini joins us from the ground tonight in Ukraine. Jason, why are there so many orphans in Ukraine and their chances of being adopted? I'm sure each and every one of them just wants you know, a family. They want love. What are the chances of that happening? Great question, Chance. Well, Vladimir, in the piece, he's the, the head of the orphanage. He said that several families have reached out and they've wanted to adopt uh, since the situation started. There's been all this international interest, but he says, one, he can't get them out right now because it's just too unsafe. They need that green corridor that he talked about. And two, he says that the laws of Ukraine, uh, there's just a lot of red tape that make it very difficult for foreigners to adopt children. Now, as far as why there are so many orphans, I asked him that. And what he said was that uh, really, it's economic reasons that since the collapse of the Soviet Union, there's you know, been a real upending of many people's lives. And he says there's also a lack of government support for families who are lower class families. And so that's why so many young people fall through the cracks. And now some of the young people are really at, at the center of what's going on right now, trapped. And each of them deserves a family, whether it is in Ukraine or internationally and you just you want know, the best for each and every one of them. Jason Bellini, I'm glad you're telling their story. Thank you.